As part of the Faces of Pharaoh synthesizing lesson, Activity 3 includes a poem by Percy Shelley called Ozymandias. And when examining this poem, it's important to make sure your students understand there are three different speakers in the poem. So I am providing you a highlighted sample of the poem with the three speakers in three different colors. Of course, it's also imperative to begin this by doing a cold read. So take a moment to read through the poem. You may pause the video and restart when you have finished. After you have read through the poem, and you, I suggest doing this as in a whole group with your students aloud, then have the students mark the poem by indicating the three different speakers. I have chosen yellow for the narrator, green for the traveler, and pink for Ozymandias. So as you're looking at the poem and you've read it, you may have students read this aloud using three different speakers. And notice the difference that they get from the poem when they understand that the poem is being told in distance and time from time from the sculptor to the traveler who is sharing the story with the actual speaker. You may use this time to go through the poem as a whole group, or you may choose to chunk the questions that are associated with this lesson and have them go through the poem in small groups. So looking at the lesson, it says the poem presents multiple speakers. And as I mentioned, I've assigned yellow, green, and pink to my speakers in the poem and had this, I would have the students actually highlight those on a document themselves. And ask the students, in addition to those three speakers, what other character is present? Sometimes this will require them some discussion to find the other character. But the fourth character present who does not speak within the poem is the sculptor himself. It's also a good idea to begin the poem by understanding some of the academic vocabulary. For example, line four, visage, mocked, that's in line eight, sneer, which they might not understand as a facial expression, and then finally a pedestal so that they understand what the sculptor sculpture looks like being on a pedestal. So once they've understood these first two questions and they get a grasp on how the poem is being presented, you would give them a chart like the one below. So we're having more practice with dialectical journals in which they identify the speaker, describe the speaker, give the speaker's opinion about Ozymandias, and then most importantly, the textual evidence that supports their inference. So they have facts from the poem. They have inferences that they come up with in their small groups or individually. And then they have textual evidence that supports the inference that they make. I won't read all of these speakers and opinions and pieces of evidence with you. And of course, students may word things much differently, but you have this example that gives all four characters, not just the three speakers, because it mentions in the fourth line across, you have the sculptor who created the statue and maybe that he regarded Ozymandias as cruel, as a cruel ruler and evidence for that. At this point, we want the students to understand the irony inside the poem. And obviously what's ironic about the declaration on the pedestal is that his greatness didn't last. His works and his reputation were no longer there. No one would even know Ozymandias had the sculpture not created his work and the traveler hadn't chose to share his experience. So you want them to be sure that they are discussing among themselves 
what lasted over the course of time and how that is ironic, the words that Ozymandias says compared to what's actually there. So it's a good time to reinforce irony and dramatic irony. And also synthesize together a piece of work, the sculpture, the written words, and also the poetry. And you will be asking them to continue on in their small groups with their questions about why he would use multiple speakers. One of the ideas that they might not come up with is to establish that distance from the time the sculpture was created, from the time that Ozymandias was a ruler, and then to the time when the traveler actually sees the ruins. So we want to help them understand this and what stands the test of time. Following through, we come up with an assignment on thematic ideas. There will be supplied for you a list that you can share with your students of thematic ideas that is also a great tool for them to have in their toolbox in a notebook or a set of cards that they can use at their desks to identify these, to give them something to lean on as a jump start. Some of the possible thematic ideas for this poem would be ambition, defeat versus victory, nature versus civilization, and power. And then obviously they want to have them synthesize even further when they're looking back at their sculpture of Ramses II from earlier in the lesson. And also, coming up with thematic ideas about what he was like and how he was seen in the future.